successfully launching missions to every planet in the solar system, in addition to critical national security, science, weather, and communication satellites, ULA has established a long-standing industry reputation for reliability and orbit accuracy. While our rockets lift off from launch pads in Florida and California, the journey to space begins in Decatur, Alabama. At approximately 1.6 million square feet, ULA's production facility is an always-on workhorse where technicians simultaneously build components for Atlas V, Delta IV Heavy, and Vulcan Centaur rockets. Booster production begins when large aluminum plate stock is loaded into one of four double gantry skin milling machines where aluminum is milled into patterns designed for building tanks and other components. This process helps reduce the original weight of each panel by 70%, while maintaining approximately 75% of the original material strength. After machining, skin panels are transported to the brake form and bump pressed into the precise curb radius required to create fuel tank barrel sections. Components made from aluminum require anodization to protect from corrosion. For this requirement, certain components, like skin panels, are first given a high-pressure wash and then dipped in a series of chemicals to complete the sealing process. Skin panels are then transported to the vertical friction stir welder, where they are lifted and forged together to form the barrel sections of the fuel and oxidizer tanks. Delta IV and Vulcan Centaur tanks are comprised of five skin panels, while four skin panels form the Atlas V tanks. Friction stir welding is a unique process accomplished by a pin tool, which applies frictional heat and stirring of the parent material to form a weld. This process only uses friction as the heat source and has no filler material, making an extremely strong welded joint. Completed aluminum barrel sections then move to the circumferential friction stir welder where domes are welded to each end, completing the first stage fuel tanks. After pressure testing, which verifies the integrity of the welds, the next stop for booster fuel tanks is the spray-on foam insulation booth, or SOFI. This is where completed tanks are primed, then insulated to protect from the acoustics that occur at liftoff. Tanks then move to final assembly, where components like wiring and engines are added. In addition to the first stage, or booster stage, ULA's second stages are also built in Decatur. The factory has recently undergone a major reconfiguration, resulting in a new state-of-the-art Centaur 5 production line to increase the speed at which Vulcan Centaur second stages are built, assembled, and tested. The Centaur upper stages for Atlas and Vulcan are built using a thin stainless steel structure, making it the most efficient upper stage currently in use. To create the domes or bulkheads for Centaur's two tanks, gores or pie-shaped sheets are welded together. The bulkheads and tank skins are then assembled using a combination of spot and seam welds. Spray-on foam insulation, or SOFI, is then applied to the Centaur tank to provide thermal protection for the cryogenic fuels. Centaur's tanks are known as pressure-stabilized tanks because 90% of their weight and structure at launch is from the mass of the fuel and oxidizer loaded prior to liftoff. The Centaur tank then moves to final assembly, where engines, avionics, pneumatic, and propulsion systems are installed. At the end of the production journey, all systems on both the Booster and Centaur are fully tested, and the stages are prepared for transport to the launch site. With testing and transport preparations completed, Atlas V, Delta IV Heavy, and Vulcan Centaur rockets exit the factory and roll about a mile down the road to a dock on the Tennessee River. Once loaded onto the RS rocket ship, ULA's specially designed cargo boat, the rockets begin the eight-day trip to Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Florida or the 23-day trip to Vandenberg Space Force Base, California. <laughs>